and in the words of Martin Tyler, we're live. Um, hello. Uh, so bear with me. I need to add in both James and Christian. Bear with me. All right, James is straight in now, like a rat up a drain pipe. I don't know if you've ever been referred to as a rat up a drain pipe before, James. Well, now, now we've got to try and get a question well. on, which, we, <laughs> which proved to be somewhat tr problematic in the uh, practice we just had. So bear with us, guys. Um, he's not joined just yet. Oh, dear. This, <laughs> this could be all, we'll be all night just waiting for him to come in. Uh, bear with me. He's not pressured. I'll try and invite him again. Oh, he's online. He declined it. So Christian just declined it. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah. So give us, give us a minute, guys. We're just waiting for our uh, crazy Australian friend to um, and it just come up unable to join. What is he doing, honestly? The bloody Australians, eh? You can't take... Mm. Hey, you see, I, I can see you guys, but... Um, You've got to send a request to join it, Christian. So the little button at the bottom there that says plus and um, uh, it says try again. Here we go. Right. <laughs> Can't take him anywhere, can you? We had him on just then, just a minute in the practice. So um, he, he can get on now. Yeah, we can't share pictures, unfortunately, James, by the looks of it when there's three of you on. It's a bit of a pain. Yeah, it's all right, buddy. The Christian, at the bottom of the page, it will say request to join video. I, oh, he's done it. Hold up. Oh, need like a drum roll. I won't press that too hard, otherwise the bar will collapse. So uh, he's trying. Oh, hold up. Well, somebody's here that should be in bed. Oh, what's happening now? It's not letting me... I'm probably... I'm wrong. Oh, is that? Hey! <laughs> He's with oh. us. I can, I can Evening, mate. Evening or morning to you, isn't it? Big screen. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm on. He's here. He's here. So, um, uh, evening, everyone. Uh, so, uh, invited a couple of my Steam diecast colleagues. Um, so, uh, rather, you, you probably know who I am by now. So. Um, I'll hand over to the Northerner first. So we've got a Northerner and a Southern Hemisphere rep uh, representative tonight. So hand over to James. Want to introduce yourself? Oh yeah. <laughs> How's that? Hello. Uh, yeah, James. Right. Uh, so that was that was. <laughs> yeah, that was what I do. Well, uh, bomber commands for me. Bomber command and anything Polish really at the minute. Um, and that's what I'm trying to keep an eye out for. The collection's gone from to, to, to again, and we'll see how it is. The missus doesn't like it at all, but she supports it. So I've got to be careful with what I say. She's standing outside of the screen, but see the gun sort of slide. <laughs> She's not far away. <laughs> She's not far away at all. Yeah, she's very close. Bless her. Well. Behind every great man is a great woman, apparently, so uh, with a shotgun in her hand. <laughs> so cheers, James. Um, to Christian, I I'm sure a few people know you. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name's Christian Oakley. I live in Sydney, Australia. As you can see, I'm a rather big diecast collector. Among about a thousand other hobbies and work, my life is so full at the moment. If you hear dogs in the background, they're my Scottish Terriers. I apologise, and um, I'm looking forward to talking to these two lovely blokes from the UK about the Corgi catalogue and maybe we can just throw in a bit of cricket in there as well. I don't know. We'll see how we go. Well, let's hope so. So, obviously, the, the title tonight is about the catalogue. I believe it's released the second week of January. Um, I don't think they've firmed up the date yet. So, for anybody who's watching, um, Corgi have got um, an advent calendar. So, every day through December, they'll be releasing different information around different Christmas sort of presents, uh, some of the great uh, things you can buy from the aviation uh, archive and, of course, obviously, like Vanguard and stuff like that. And I think there'll be a few hints, um, especially maybe in the last diecast diary, 
which is released on the 17th of December, uh, written by Michael and his chums at Colgate. Um, we, before we start, uh, I know nothing, um, sounding like a, an Essex man well there, but I don't, I don't know, but I can make some assumptions. Um, and that's basically what we're going to do. It's more hopes rather than aspirations, I guess. Um, but what we're going to do, uh, like a true gentleman, we'll give it to our Australian friends first to go through um, some of his wants for the new catalogue. Unfortunately, uh, when there's three of us online, we can't share the pictures, which is a real pain in the backside. I don't know if I can put them into the comments. No, you can't. So um, we did have a, a load of pictures all lined up ready to roll and we can't put them in so uh, it's not quite as good as teams where you can share information unfortunately so uh, it's going to be more of a case of a talk through um, but Christian I'm going to shut the hell up uh, and mute myself so we can actually listen to you um, do you want to go through the ones I know you sent me uh, and Matt uh, and talk away mate I'm just going to press mute so there's no outside info uh, no outside noise Okay, yeah, so um, the ones that I've requested are pretty much, I've been requesting them for five or six years, or even longer. I'm just getting them up here myself so I can remember, so I don't make a dick of myself and get the wrong units. But to me, the th <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. The, um, there's a couple of criteria that I think, one that's got a fabulous scheme, it's got a great history, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be British or um, American, and I would say that because I'm Australian. And um, it, it's so they're probably the, the main two criteria. And I guess I should start for Lancaster first. And I say this knowing that there's probably a good chance there will be no Lancaster this year. We've had a, a good run of them. The last one was a was a pretty good, um, colourful, good nose art Lancaster. So I suspect that we may be getting another heavy this year and not the Lancaster. But uh, there is an Australian 463 Squadron Lancaster called Uncle Joe. Uh, it's a Centurion. Uh, did 100 missions. It spent most of its time in 463 Squadron. I think it was with 43 Squadron RAF before that. Um, but I have to go and double check. But it was with an RAF Squadron before that for a little while. But it spent most of its time. With 463 Squadron. It has got the most amazing uh, nose art. It has a picture of Joseph Stalin on it, would you believe? And it's got all its mission markings. And it has also, on its 100th mission, which ended up in Russia, it's got a, uh, another bit of mark, another bit of writing on the nose there called 100 Up Tonight. On its, um, so the actual scheme is on its 100th mission and it's uh, marked for its 100th mission. And um, it is fantastic nose art. And uh, if anyone just looks up Uncle Joe, Lancaster J-O-U, uh, 463 Squadron, it's serials ED-611, uh, correction, ED-611. And uh, have a look at it and you'll see what I'm talking about with those fantastic nose markings. So that's the first one. Uh, the second it's one... It's a real stunner, mate, by the way. Actually, it's absolutely spot on. Thank Was you. the last Lancaster G for Georgia Australian one? Sorry, mate? Was the last... Colgie Lancaster representing the Australian squadron, G for George, no. or technically Thumper, wasn't it? I oh, suppose. Yeah, it was G for George, yeah. So we've had two Australian Lancasters. Uh, Lead, leader. George. Sorry? Leader. Uh, if leader counts. BBMF one. The BBMF one. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. No, yes, of course. Yeah, no, it, yeah, all right. It sort of counts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy it, so that's... A kangaroo on it. What more do you want? How much, how much I think it's a... Uh, <laughs> I think it's an Australian. Yeah. Um, but obviously, G for George, um, that was a, you know, that was an obvious one because it's stuck in uh, the War Memorial here in Australia, and obviously, it's for sugar, is it? Hendon, or is it Duxford? It's yeah. one of the two. Hendon, 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 yeah. Yeah, so... Yep, they're the two we've done, and they were the first, what, two out of four releases or something? The similar thing to the Sutherlands. Um, yeah, so I, I think we're due. We've had the 100th anniversary of the Royal Australian Air Force. Look, I've got that in. Um, but that's nearly over now. COVID's ruined it. But still, it's a great Lancaster. It's still got all the, you know, the British markings on it. Served your bomb command in World War II, and the markings on it are just fantastic. Hold up. Was it Les Knight and Aussie? Yeah, but that was yeah. No, I've I got his link six one seven. But technically speaking, well, no, I've got Liz Knight and Barlow. <laughs> I've got them all. 
Top I like, I like if it's any connected Aussie, I'll grab it. But I couldn't grab the BBMF Lancaster with the uh, with leader on it. It just wasn't close enough to it being an Australian piece. Shall I get on to the next one? Because I'm yeah, crapping on it. Carry on. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the next one is obvious. Is uh, the Tiger Force one, and this is. We've only ever had one Lancaster ever um, that's uh, not from a, a Bomber Command scheme, and that is a Tiger Force Lancaster. There's nine squadron uh, AF uh, partook in that. For those who don't know what Tiger Force is, during operation, uh, or the proposed operation uh, to invade Japan, there it is. There's one. There's the 144 uh, version of it. Thank you. Excellent. No, that's 172. Oh, is that code a code three? three? Yeah, oh, code three, look. yeah. Who made that uh, for you? Uh, Dan, Dan initially, then Gary fixed it, because uh, when Dan sent it, a few of the decals rubbed off. But, yeah, something similar to this, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So Operation Downfall was the proposed invasion of Japan, that, thanks to Instant Sunshine and Nakasaki and Hiroshima. And um, one of the main components of the invasion was to bomb the bejesus was left of Japan and bombing and Tiger Force, the RAF, as the war wound down in Europe, uh, Bomber Command set up a force, Tiger Force, which is going to be which involved Australian, UK, Canadian uh, squadrons um, to send a force over the Far East and get for Operation Downfall. Um, Obviously, the invasion didn't happen, but it's still an amazing scheme. I think a Lancaster in white with a black underside, oh, as stunning. you saw, uh, is sorry, it's, fucking stunning. Yeah. And I think it's a, a really good one, and I think it would sell very well. I, I think we've had, what, 25, 26 length, well, probably more Lancasters now. I've got, you know, a dozen, an even dozen of them myself, so I'm as mad as everyone else. But the only one that hasn't been Bomber Command has been the Canadian Rescue one, which I think is one of the most beautiful models Stunning. ever. But it didn't it sell well. That was the only problem with that one. Though. It didn't sell great. Uh, but it's bloody beautiful. And I think um, I think it's, it's a good change-up from Bomber Command. Um, Bomber Command to this all white kind of side of the Nine Squadron, I think, would be the obvious one. And, um, yep, that's what I like. I think it, I think those two Lancasters. But, again, I think it's fair to say that um, we're not going to see a Lancaster this. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I didn't think it was going to be one last one, and there was. So the money maker, cool. though, isn't it? It's a banker. So. It is. That's right. Shall we talk about the camera for a little bit? <laughs> oh, I'm not, I, I sort of knew you was going to try and shoehorn this in, but being the son of an ex-Canberra oh. weapons tech, I'm more than happy to talk about it. It's one of my favourite aircraft. I've, I've been reasonable about this one. I, I think I've been reasonable. I've, I've chosen two languages. There's obviously, the Argentinian one, which was announced but never done. Yeah. There's one flying spray in there. I've finally seen it. It's um, I saw it tomorrow, three weeks, three or four weeks ago. I think I posted some photos and I've sent some video to people. It is just amazing that, that those Avon engines, just incredible. Just love it. Sweet. So we've got one... Yeah, we've got one in uh, in two squadron colours, Vietnam War, and that's obviously the one that's the obvious one. I have been talking about this particular Canberra for 15 years, maybe. I don't know. Since, you know <laughs> really? It was one I've not heard it from you, yeah. Christian, honestly. <laughs> it's an obvious one. Uh, two squadron, Fan Ran Bay is part of the 35th uh, Tactical Fighter Wing in Vietnam. It's the longest serving uh, bomber squadron on operational service of any bomber squadron up until the Gulf War, or the Second Gulf War, sorry, or the war against terror. Um, it went straight from uh, Malaya, Butterworth, straight to uh, Fan Ran Bay, no break from the emergency, Malayan emergency to uh, the uh, to the Vietnam War. It, it is a cracking scheme. It would be very popular with Vietnam collectors, which there are a million of them. And uh, the colour scheme is just magnificent. Um, I've got a code three over there uh, from a, a friend of mine in the United States. He's just a genius, and it is just magnificent. So um, there's not much more I could say. I just think it's an obvious one. Uh, why it's not done, why it wasn't done for last year for the anniversary, I don't know. There's been a lot of talk that the tooling's cactus. 
I've been assured on a number of occasions it's not. There are a few yeah, issues. So have I. And we asked okay. that question, didn't we, to Michael, and it is yeah. available. So. The, 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 the tooling is still alive, and it's a tight little tooling. Um, the other one is 45 Squadron, uh, the Far East. Camo colours, great little bit of tail art. Um, it really is a fabulous one. I think, the mo in my view, I've got quite a few Canberras in... The, uh, in my collection, uh, both Code Threes and and Blighted Canberras, and uh, the the the, oh, the the last release, the Mark whatever it was, I can't remember now. Um, it is a PR nine, PR seven, I think it is. It's just a magnificent Canberra, and uh, it's got a camo scheme. It's just it's just wonderful. So. I think a 45 squadron one operating the Far East during the emergency and it was there for the confrontation as well. I think yeah. would be a, would, a pretty and good we'll tie camera. in nicely to the last Vulcan release as well because a very similar, it's the same sort of camo scheme, isn't yes. it? Yes. So it makes yes, perfect right. companion. Um, yep. Oh, that's, that was my fault when I looked at it anyhow. Yeah, it's, and it is. It's a, that camo scheme on that camo, is, it's very, it, it sits very well. Next one, another one that I've been talking about for 15 years, two, two, one, four, RAF 214 Squadron B-17. There's a 148 <laughs> version. It's the only RAF bomber, four-engine bomber, not released by Corgi. We've got yeah. the Lancasters, we've got Sterlings, and obviously we've got uh, uh, Halifaxes, but the, la the last one, the very last one that Serbian yeah. bombers come up is the uh, B-17. It could be either be the... Um, the Mark II or the um, in balance. It's and it's got it's a great scheme. There is some mods that required. There's the the chin sensor underneath the the, the chin, and there's the um, RDF radar as well, or RDF sorry, um, underneath the fuselage. I think it would be a fantastic addition. Actually, on the fuselage, the chin, yeah, chin. Um, the chin sensor. So, yeah, and it's a great scheme. Black underside, British uh, Bomber Command, uh, standard colours up top. Just fabulous. 100, 100 uh, group bomber, 214 squadron. And Give it I to just, Uncle. It's an oh, easy one to do. They've done it in 144, haven't they? What would I know? I don't know anything. Um, so that's enough of that one. The next one is a B-25. Now, there is... Quite a few B-25s that would work out well, I think. Um, there's obviously the MOH winner here in uh, here in the far uh, here from Australia. I forget which squadron, but um, there's a Medal of Honor winner B-25. The one I picked is the Desert Warrior. Now, those of you who have those of you who have um, may have got the Franklin Mint Squall B-24. Um, it's got on one side, it's actually quite similar to that. So it's got a huge map on the forward fuselage of the Mediterranean, um, which is very similar to the Squaw. It's got our work on both sides, it's got all its missions. I think it completed around about 68 sorties or whatever. It went back to the United States on a, um, on a bond tour, so it survived the war. And, um, and interesting enough, a Canadian flew it. Uh, was part of the crew, um, a Royal Canadian Air Force uh, fella in who was actually still in the Canadian Air Force when he flew. It's a Tunisian bomber, North Africa. Uh, it flew with the uh, I, uh, I was going to say seventy second, but I'm not quite sure if that's right. Bomber. Well, dude, after after this, Christian, I'll put up yes. your suggestions as pictures. I'll put up James's suggestions as pictures and my suggestions as pictures as. Uh, post so people get an idea of what the actual aircraft look like because I've saved all the pictures just a shame we can't share them on here yeah no that's all right um uh, 81st bomb squadron 12th bomb group north africa um and as i said survived the war great artwork it just and the name desert warrior i mean what a great name for a there's only group. one desert b25 that's been done and that was the nose art one wasn't it uh with the weathering uh, one i haven't got actually and it's bloody gorgeous i mean legal eagle it's one of them ones that's sort of, it's more Italian theatre, isn't it, I think. Um, but the, the desert one with the nose art is absolutely beautiful. I've seen it up close, but I've never got it. Um, my worry would be next year's Doolittle Raid, 
it wouldn't surprise me. It's an easy route to go up and do another do little radar. That that's what I think they'd be more inclined to do. But we yeah, no see. problem. But uh, I think a lot of lot of mission. Um, and like there's you know there's so many pictures of it because it went on the bond to us, so it's it'd be easy to copy. But no, you, you're probably right. They'll, they'll no, it's a brilliant skin, mate. It's absolutely stunning, and it's and that's what we're talking about that difference. Because it's great buying, it's a bit like the grey jet syndrome, isn't it? You can buy 100 yeah. grey jets that all look the bloody same. Yet, you know, if you've got a B-25, the most stunning B-25s aren't the Doolittle Raiders or the, you know, as much as I love the Canon nose ones, they're great, like that out of hell. The ones that stand mm. out are like the PBYs. They just, just look so different. Legal Eagle looks so different to anything else. And it really, yeah. really catches the eye. So now I would be completely in awe or yeah. something like that. And of course, obviously it ties in with the Desert War next year anyhow. It's around about that time, wasn't it, 41 onwards. So, um, Sometimes well, we stuff stuff, I think that's the problem. I think some stuff, some desert stuff doesn't really sell as well as, I mean, I love, I, the, the Mediterranean Theatre War, particularly North Africa, is out of all the campaigns, is probably my favourite because that's how they developed the tactics that we used in Western Europe, you know, post D-Day, you know, that, that um, close air support type operations and counter and air yeah. and busting and just all of that was mastered and learned in the desert. And, uh, it's, and, and, you know, and major operations, air, air land cooperation, all that had to be mastered in the desert. And um, that's why I think it's fascinating. But and it, was, it, it, was, it really, too, not in, in terms of the war as well, it was yeah. to and fro, you know, one minute hmm. allies were on the back foot, next minute the Germans were on the back foot, then the allies are back on the back foot, and then obviously the United yeah. States and Operation Torch come in and sort of finally mopped it up. But it was one of those ones that, like the Battle of Britain, there was this knife edge point and it could have gone yeah. either way. And it make, that makes it even more, even more, I won't say exciting, but um, it makes it even more, I think it's not really covered enough. The, the desert warfare because like i said it was a real, it's important as the battle of britain in some respects if you know the germans had got a hold of north africa you know the suez canal through palestine it's, it's a different again it's a different ball game but then saying that you can say that about russia you can say that about d-day you can say but i guess yeah, you know it's I mean, it's you know the, the other thing about i mean it's not just north africa but it's also malta it's the mediterranean in general i mean some of those anti-shipping yeah. I mean, we will see a, a Beaufort or, or, or a fighter coming this year um, from the MTO based out of Moldo on anti-shipping operations, you know, with that T, TLS, you know, scheme, the temperate scheme. I mean, they just awesome operations, dangerous overwater operations. Um, the North African campaign prior to Tunisia was no, is known by many historians as the, 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 uh, the campaign of airfields or the battle of airfields. It was about the airfields and uh, from a logistic from an offensive um, uh, point of view. So, but again, you know, not everyone's me, not everyone's that wrapped up in the axles about uh, the desert and, and the Mediterranean theatre of operations. They're not. So and I accept that, but that would be, a, that B-25, I think it'd be a cracking scheme. No, I think, I, I, I think all four you covered, um, I, I would say yeah. no to them, I think, you know, they all stand out as for me, as easy sellers, easy money. Just hope that, the people run Corgi see it the same. Or if not, if they don't, haven't seen it this way, this time, maybe next time. And, you know, that's the whole idea of doing stuff like this. I guess that helps. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get to speak. We live in hope. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun talking about it. We Absolutely. Here, and and it, it saves typing out a thousand words in order to do it on the model hangar free, doesn't it? So uh, well, it's much easier to talk than write in my eyes. Yeah. No, anyway, we'll see how we go. Anyway, that's me. I, I probably I didn't pick any single engine or anything like that. I tried to stay away from Australian. I could have crapped on about three squadrons to the cows. <laughs> tried to. Right. He tried. Uh, but I did the righty. So yeah, no, that's. I think that's me done. Brilliant. Okay. Right. So cheers, Christian. Obviously, you, we chip in again in a minute because we've got we've both got ours to to cover off. So James, yep. over to you. <laughs> Uh, Christian's actually nailed a couple himself. Oh, that's uh, a cop out if ever I've heard it. Got, so, <laughs> the one that I, hey, top of my up. wish list is, I don't think we're going to get it, but I mentioned it last time, Johnny Johnson Dambusters Lang. The guy's just turned 100. He's yeah. just had his 100th birthday. He's not going to live forever. 
they need and that's to one of the questions I've been I've got at the end tonight I was going to ask so yeah I, I it's got to be done agree. if it's I not Johnny agree. Johnson then the only other link I would like is a just Jane re-release yeah uh, failing that pains me to say it but no Lancasters look at the last one we got the uh, Grog shot it's it's there for the taking it's an absolutely stunning Lancaster but it's just mm. it's available everywhere people are just they've had enough they just, just yeah. right give it 12 months unless it's a damn Buster's Lank and they'll snap it up um, second on my list was a B17 uh, 100 group bomber command nailed yeah. that question um I'd love to see one of them to go with a B24 that they've already got in 172. That'd be a fantastic bit of kit. Um, my third was the Blackpool Air Race Spitfire. It's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. And As in me, the one I've got, uh, 14 or 16 or both? But any, any. It doesn't really matter. Covered. <laughs> yeah. I've got that in mind. Just, it's Silver Griffin Spitfires are stunning. And yeah. with it being Blackpool and I'm, Obviously, I'm living in Blackpool. It's it's a must-have for me. It's a fantastic, yeah, fantastic fire. Um, another one I'd like to see is a Wellington. Now, I know we've just had a Wellington come out. I know we've got one due out, but I'd like to see a Polish, uh, not a Polish Air Force, but an RAF Wellington that was a Polish squadron. So, uh, 300, 301 squadron. Because early war years, the Poles absolutely hammered Germany with these uh, Wellingtons and for all the release all the bomber command releases we've got we've not got one Polish bomber no, not we've got one. a Defiant haven't we we've got a Defiant yeah. we've got Hurricanes we've got Spitfire yeah we've got a Defiant Hurricane Spitfire but we've not got any heavies which I think we're missing um, I'd can. like to see one of those uh, I've got I've got as a generalisation now with Malta anything from Malta ideally I would love to see a ship hunting uh, Bristol Blenheim. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. The Blenheims in Malta, the early Blenheims, they didn't even have time to decorate them. You know, they were just sent straight from the UK. They were they looked like daylight bombers from the UK, just green and green and brown. Um, but I'd love to see a, a, a Malta Blenheim. That would be fantastic. Or another Spitfire Hurricane. Uh, anything for Malta, really, because it's a fantastic theatre. And they always seem to do fairly well, depending on what it is. So I'm hopeful for Malta. Uh, a Griffin Spitfire. I'd love a Griffin. Don't care what it is. I just love the Griffin Spit. But I really want, to be a bit, bit broader with that, is a bubble canopy Spitfire. Whether it's a Mer Griffin, a Seafire. It, it doesn't matter. Just something... It just gives the Spitfire a bit of a, a bit of a spark, a bit of a kick. Something we've not had. A Seafire would be good. Um, I'd like to see a Seafire, but yeah, a bubble canopy Spitfire would be nice. It doesn't matter. JJ, it's the most obvious one. Clip wing, clip wing bubble canopy. Yeah. JJ. Yeah. That'd be. But with that, you can have the clip wing. You can have, you know, a standard Spitfire. It, it, the choices are immense for that, and. They'd snap it up. Um, it's, it's the, the list just goes on and on and on. But you've got uh, another one I'd like to see, but I doubt they, they won't do it because nobody actually really knows what it looks like, is BM597, the uh, Historic Aircraft Collection Spitfire. The colouring it's got now, the Laguna one, is a temporary skit. It's it's only there for yeah. a short term. That's going the Mark II's made, yeah. Yeah, so that's just going to, that'll disappear end of the year, that's gone. I would like to see BM597 in its wartime scheme. It's it's a rare, rare Spitfire because it's not it's not a, a rebuild or a replica. It's a genuine wartime Spitfire that saw action and combat. It was I'd like to see that done in its wartime camo. Green, and green. It wears the early wartime Mark V camo as well, which is quite rare for a Mark V, the green yeah. brown rather than green yeah. grey. Yeah, so that'll, I want to see that in the grey, the grey and green that it flew in uh, out of Woodvale. But that's unlikely to happen because the thing with that one is I don't know if it'd sell or not because it's, it's slightly different. It's a 
standard Mark V, grey green, but the roundels underneath are bigger than the roundels on the top of the wings. The underneath roundels were done too big and they're massive. So I just, I don't know if people buy it. They look at it and go, that looks a bit shit. I'm not having that. Whereas I'd love it. Um, P47, Nelly. I would love to see Nelly B. Yeah. She's a fantastic P47 and she'd fit me with what I've got. P51, any that's flying at the minute. Any survivor we see on the air show circuit at the minute. Uh, but I'll leave that to you, Mark, because I did, did clock <laughs> I did clock some of your stuff. There, so I'll let you crack on with that one. Uh, Malta again, Malta anything. This pains me. Bouchon. <laughs> a Bouchon. No, I don't think uh, it pains you. I, I no, no, people, it, a lot of people it, will. Um, yeah, but, but I'd buy it because I feel I'd have to buy it. But I don't want to buy it because I don't like Bouchons. I think the shit. I'll explain my theory. <laughs> At the end, when I talk about that. Yeah, so it's like, you know, here's my money, take it. I don't want you to take it, because your plane's crap, but I've got to have it. So it's, it's, just, it's daylight robbery, they're going to rob me blind. I think Christian's actually crying, tears of disgust. Well, <laughs> the thing is, what well, how many of flying now in the UK? I think when I was at Duxford, there was four or five of them. Like, yeah, there's there's about, in, there's Europe, five, now. in Europe, there seem to be... Seven. So, if you include the five that are restored in Britain, yeah. plus one in Belgium, plus a further one that's coming out of Sidewell, potentially in Spanish colours. So, there'll be up to seven at one point. Now, I'd buy um, that one. I'd buy yeah. the Spanish one because that's a bouchon. Yeah, I'd buy that one. Yeah. I'll talk more about that when I get to my bit and the theory behind it. I do have theory. So, um, yeah. So, P fifty one. Anything uh, bouchon. Yeah, I'd like to see a bit. Well, I wouldn't like to see a Bouchon, but it'd be good to see a Bouchon. And possibly with the new P51, maybe a B or a C. Yeah. If we could possible. do a, a B or a C, that'd be good. Um, I'd like to see that. And finally, just to, to get off me, I don't do 148. But if Corgi were to release a 148, I imagine it would be another Phantom. Because they've got the tooling, it's fantastic, it's a seller, yeah. drawn to a good thing. But yeah. if you were to do something different, I, you'd have to look at maybe size, cost, how many parts you're going to get. I imagine that I'd like to see a Harrier in 148, but I doubt I'd ever see that. A Hunter would be the easiest to do. Yeah, it's an old tooling, it's not been done in years. Yeah, and in 148, it'd, be, it'd probably be extremely easy to buy. Uh, to make However, sorry. the hunter has now got a very bad press, though. That's the only problem. Yeah, after that oh, clamp, sure. it smashed it to pieces. Fucking yeah. idiot. Um, but yeah, I mean that that covers me for the most part. The James, highlight of mine. James, you you missed one. The no, I don't want it. I don't want you don't it. Want it? No. What? I don't, I don't want what it. What? What are we talking about? The Polish heritage flight. Um, oh, no. I'd, I'm shocked by that. I thought you'd be all over no, that one. No, no, I do want it, but I don't want it as a Mark One or a Mark Two spit, uh, Hurricane. Sorry, I want them to do it. If you recall the Merlins over Malta box set, yeah, the Hurricane is uh, it, well, the, the Corgi mold, they all look the same. Yeah, but with the the Merlin over Malta set, it represents the twelve gun Hurricane. I would like RFR, if they were to do it, to have 12 guns. Even though it's wrong, it didn't have 12 guns, because that's what it has now on this on the Hurricane that the Polish Heritage Flight have got. I'd like that one. But I don't think they'd do it. I'd, just, I'd snap that up in a heartbeat, but I just don't think they'd do it. Okay. Anyway. There was no Hurricane this year, was there? So, uh, no. I did, I, did, uh, I did call a Cleggy at Duxford in September. You know, I, I did uh, walk him around that hurricane. Well, you know, this is a fine example of an aircraft. Are you going to do this? And, well, he politely told me what was going on with Corgi. And uh, so I don't think we're going to see anything, to be honest, which would be a shame. But I'm, I'm open. I am open. Okay. All fingers and crossed. Sally B. But I don't think we're at Sally B either. No, I don't think Ellie, the operator, is overly keen on it. 
No, absolutely. Um, We've no. had that discussion, um, yeah. which feels an incredibly weird so why, decision. Sorry? Why, sorry, why aren't they keen on it? No idea, mate. No idea. Okay. See, I suggested to Michael, um, and, and I guess somebody else has done this further down the line, that you, you do the B17, you add 10 quid to the price, and yeah. that 10 quid goes towards Sally B. So you do a 2,000 yeah. run, that's 20 grand for Sally B for doing diddly squat. Apparently not I think, um, speaking to some of the guys at Doug, did, this could be wrong, speaking to some of the guys at Dugsford in September, uh, the issue with Sally B was, I mean, I don't play at one, is it 144? Yeah, I one in yeah, now apparently there's two in 144. One that they agreed to do and one that Corgi did off their own back and that she wasn't happy with that. She was really pissed at... Corgi basically screwed her, and she was not yeah. happy. So she refuses to have anything to do with Corgi, even if it would make her 10 grand. Our principle, she's just told Corgi to piss off, basically. Strange decision. But it's right. a strange decision. Look, if I, if I had a bomber, which I was calling out for donations for every day to try and keep it going, because it is incredibly expensive to oh, run. Oh, God. If That's someone's right. offering me 20 grand... I'll bite their hand off. But no, that's yeah, just me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We're only, we can only see it from the level we see it at. But yeah. uh, it feels like a no-brainer. But more importantly yeah. for me, being a selfish git, I would love Sally. Sally B's a massive hole in my collection. Yeah, that's and it, I believe, exactly. Um, I, don't believe, I don't know if he's on. The guy, uh, Andy, I think his name is, who's a um, plane collector on Instagram. He actually redid his... Um, yes, he saw that. It was really Sunday. good. And it looked amazing. It looked brilliant. Yeah, and um, that shows you the potential. So, I yeah, it's a cracking bit of kit. Um, and that, that's pretty much it from me. But uh, So, yeah, I'll hand over to you, Mark. Um, but right. if there's anybody watching this, I mean, in these comment things down here, uh, obviously we can still type to you guys. So, if there's anything you want, just pin it in there and while Mark's Oh, waffling, there he is. Thanks, mate. It's a pleasure. That's £10, please. Yeah, while uh, Mark's waffling on really, uh, <laughs> Oh, um, it's a shame we can't share the picture on now. Um, but look, check him out. Those who are watching, check out Plane Collector. Go onto his page. He's got some lovely die casts and some kits that he's making as well. And of course, he's code free. And so, uh, you know, brilliant to to see. Um, and, you know, I said it, it proves a point yeah. you do an aircraft. Like I did, uh, Gary did RN201 for me. It shows you if you get the subject right, you're on, to, you're on to winners. And sometimes you've got to see it before you go into production or do a pre pro on it. So, and yeah, look, I'm waffling on. So, uh, get yourself comfortable. Uh, sorry, but a shameless plug now before I hand over to Mark. If anybody's not followed the Polish Heritage Flight, please do. They need all the help they can get. So, get on Polish Heritage Flight and, uh, yeah, give them a follow. No, absolutely. Spot on. They're doing some great work as well. They really are doing some great work. And, of course, obviously, that's rising to Lagoon, the Spitfire as well. We need all the help they can get to, all the, to get the Spitfire built. So, uh, please help them oh, out. Uh, all right. Here we go. Strap yourself in. Get Here we go. It's probably late at night, so actually, yeah. uh, you could, this could send you to sleep. But I'm going to go for it. So, as you can see, Christian, is it is it is it, is it time for us to go now, mate? <laughs> we just uh... woken up. <laughs> no, I'm just concerned about my dog. Ah, oh, it's fine, mate. Dog? We can Dog's hear my fine. dog. Cry. <laughs> she's a star. She's a bloody show dog. Anyway, anyway, oh, whatever. My, my two, my two are in the house, hopefully. So, right. So, here's my suggestion. So, the number one suggestion I've had, um, and I don't know. Oh, he's gone now. Look, said no. Um, was basically we've had a remodelled, a, re a new mould uh, Hurricane. We've had a new mould ME109. We've had a new mould Meteor. A new mould P40. Uh, we've had a new mould Hurricane. But the one that stands out that we haven't had a new mould of. Of course, it's a Spitfire. Um, and if we look at Corgi's five and nines, they're pretty poor efforts in retrospective. They're, there's no dehydro on the wings. Uh, they're just you know, Some of the schemes, like the Great Escape Trio, is just horrible. Um, yeah. They're not great. So I'm hopeful, and I'm really, really hopeful, that this catalogue will see a remodelled Spitfire. And I think, and I'm, again, I'm just drawing... Uh, coming to the conclusion now, I think we're going to have separate wings and separate fuselages, which will enable Mark 5, Mark 8, Mark 9, Mark 11, Mark 16, and potentially 
a TR9. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is that if when you look at a, as a business, and you know, if I was running Corgi, one of the great things now in the aviation world is a flight in a Spitfire, flight in a Mustang, flight in a Hurricane, flight in a P40. We've got them all on this side of the of the pond now, thankfully. And if you're if they're tying in with some of the operators, just think how good it would be if you went up and you paid what three grand, whatever it is, to go and fly in a Spitfire, a Duxford, Big In, Sywell, uh, Goodwood, wherever you may be. And then you come out of that and then suddenly, bang, right in front of you is a box with the very Spitfire that you've flown in, in 172 scale, sitting there waiting for 50 quid. And you've just paid nearly three grand to fly in a Spitfire. A Spitfire. It's not going to be an issue. I think for me, it's easy money. Um, and, you know, it's not the most beautiful of aircrafts, is it, the, the TR-9? It's the ugly duckling of the Spitfire family. But if you're going to, you know, you look at things, when I look around my collection now, I look at things, and some of them have s certain memories attached to them. And I think, for me, it's a really, really good idea to get involved in that side. It ties in also the Warbird operators with Corgi. So if Corgi want to then go ahead and do aircraft in their collection, it makes life easier, it builds relationships. It's a no-brainer, in my eyes, but... I don't work for Corgi, so I can only just sort of give them a gentle nudge here and there. And, and some of the ideas that I've come up with in terms of, and, and all these won't be released in one go unless they have a nervous breakdown. Um, and the ones, again, which are current and tie in, the NHS Spitfire, obviously it's a Mark 11, really, really simple one to do. Uh, again, you know, you think add a few quid with that extra money going to the NHS as well. I think people will pay it willy-nilly. You've got the Silver Spitfire, of course, that went around the world, the one that's based at Goodwood, or well, it's in Denmark now, I think it is. Uh, really, really easy one to tie in. Again, you know, you think of the TR9s, so you've got the Grace Spitfire. Um, you know, that would need, obviously, a different style um, fuselage because of the Grace style canopy rather than the, the standard canopy. But it's, you know, was credited with the first kill on, um, on D-Day, you no know, real history attached to it. And of course, then you think of the, the classic Spitfires, like your MH-434, uh, MH-415, which is currently at Cywell as well, uh, which is obviously the ex Connie Edwards Spitfire. Um, you know, you think of that, it's, it's some real, you know, easy ones to do. MH-434, Ray Hanna, they just, they intricately go together. Um, you know, probably the most iconic Spitfire in the Spitfire world. And of course, Jones said about the Blackpool races. So I'm very lucky to have RN201, which was custom made for me by Gary, who helps run the page. Uh, a Mark 16 in the Blackpool, Blackpool races tied it in with a Mark uh, 14, which of RN201. Again, you know, Corgi did this with the previous catalogue. They tied in uh, the P38 and the P51 in terms of, oh my God, my brain is completely gone. Uh, uh, help me out. What was the name of the, the P-38 called? The Mustang with one tank. Oh, bollocks. It's, uh, uh, oh, Happy Jack's Go Buggy. Happy Jack's Go Buggy. Yeah. So they did the tie-in. So I think that's the future. I think they'll do things like that in tie terms of tying uh, pilots together with aircraft as well. And of course, for me, uh, one of the most iconic Spitfires, which I get to see every year, is EP-120. The fighter collection version, uh, the clip wing, Mark V, what a beautiful aircraft that is. But if you think, if they tied in different wings, different fuselages, you're making five or six types of aircraft with two different combinations. Uh, and I think it's doable, but only time will tell. Um, you know, the Spitfire for me, like I said, the Mark I is an unbelievably stunning piece of kit in 172. The Mark 14s and 19s, unbelievably beautiful. Um, again, you know, it could do with the, the bubble canopy, the low back version. But for me, it's easy money. Um, you know, Corgi's predominantly UK based. You tie it into air shows as well. You pitch up at air shows with 50 of them. As with the VRA proved when they released the Lancaster, when obviously the Canadian Lank was over, people were buying them by the bucket load. And that was 100 odd quid a time. Yeah. Now, for me, it's easy money. Tie it together. Um, you know, I'd, I'd also love to see a Legends range walk back, something that's in between aviation archive and that kids getting involved with it but not toy like something that bridges that gap i would love to see something like that because i mean we'll talk about the price bit after but that's what i'd like to see in terms of spitfires but only time will tell um we've gone a catalog without a spitfire as well i think for me that's a big hint that something's coming but we shall see and yeah next so the p51 um 
uh, James obviously picked up on that. Um, I'd like to see some Martlesham uh, uh, based aircraft with the red and blue diamonds, uh, a bit like, Ma I think it's Mabel, which is the one with the dog. Um, now, it's really, uh, there's some really nice schemes there. And of course, you've got stuff like uh, Dan Yankee as well. Um, but what I would like to see is the Duxford based aircraft. So we've got Twilight here, we've got be big, beautiful, dull. Um, for me, there's three of a selection of three I'd like to see. The obvious one is Contrary Mary, which is, of course, part of the Ultimate Fighters. More about that in a minute. Francis Dell, which is currently flying in Germany. Really lovely looking aircraft. But the one for me, which I'd just like to see for just pure lulls, is Big Dick. Everybody loves a Big Dick in diecast form. So I'd love Big Dick. The aircraft, just want to clarify that. Um, not looking <laughs> you in the eyes there, James. Uh, <laughs> but just, but something from Duxford, uh, 78 Fighter Group. Um, you've, we've got, the, I've got three um, P-47. So I've got, obviously, um, War Eagle, Snafu, uh, and uh, blah, 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 blah. what's the other one no, called? What's No Glory? That's it, No Guts of Glory. And I've got Zombie, and I've also got a uh, Forces of Valor version as well. So I've, I've, thankfully, I've got five up on that shelf, and they look stunning. We need that third one. You know, Big Beautiful Dial has been done to death. You know, Ixo, um, Colgi, Dragon, have all gone after it. You know, Helby Master have done it. You know, it's still something different. You know, Contrary Mary for me, which was Big Beautiful Dial, if anybody didn't know that, uh, when Landers left that squadron, it was repainted uh, and put into Contrary Mary with the same markings. So it's not a big deal, but it just looks a little bit different, the yellow around the, the canopy. And of course, obviously, it's something we're seeing every year at air shows in uh, would love to see that in here. Um, right, so on the P-47s, we've obviously covered Nelly. So again, we spoke about Country Mary and Nelly. That's two of the ultimate fighters. Um, now, if you think they do the Grace Spitfire, that's three of the ultimate fighters. You do Mabel, another one of the ultimate fighters. You see one getting there, yeah? Um, but the other one for me, what I'd like to see uh, is Dottie May, which is one that's been recently restored or relatively last couple of years uh, have pitched up at Chino. And also Tallahassee Lassie. Uh, it's another one which I'd love to see. Uh, certainly don't want to see Tahil Hal, which is the most hideous of schemes on a P-47 ever. Please don't ever do that. But um, those, other, those, any one of those three, and I'll be over the moon. C-47s or Dax. So uh, the obvious one for me, and I think this is coming, and I've seen a... a all right, well, he's off again. He's off again. Uh, he's got the postman this time. Um, the one for me um, is Night Fright. I thought it'd be in the last catalogue. I know, looking on the model, Hangar 3 Forum. The, uh, Do you not think they'll wait? Well, sorry? Do you not think they'll wait? Maybe mm -hmm. tie, it, tie it in with a flight? Yeah, but it's, it's, I think this summer is going to be the moment, isn't it? So if you tie it Yeah, so maybe that do it, you know, release it after it's flown, mate. I don't know, but it'd be a nice one, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, for me, it's certainly happening. So I actually put Charlie's running uh, the guy, the memory memorial flight or night flight in, t in contact with Colgi uh, and all those plans are in place. And I expected to see it last time. So for me, really easy. D-Day DAC, you can't go wrong with, uh, which also sort of ties into Dragamoot. So we see it every, in every air show season. Um, no, it's based up the road to me in North Wheels during the summer. Lovely, iconic DAC that's been around for ages. Ties into Just Jane. It used to live with Just Jane. You know, it's, you know, ties into the TR9s with Aero Legends, if they decide to do that as well. There's, again, mm. loads of tie-ins. It's one that's seen and, you know, people can get inside and, and, and really experience it, like me and Rafe did when we was at North Weald. You know, for me, it's an easy one to do. The other one as well, which I think will come, but I don't know if it's going to come this year because it's been delayed, is the new scheme for the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, Dakota. So it's going... Um, Quichabitin's being repainted into a Southeast Asian Command scheme, which I'll put up on the page either tonight or tomorrow morning uh, when I do the pictures of you guys. So, James, you need to send me some pictures of the ones that you thought about. Um, and we'll, uh, I think it'll either come the end of this year or early next year when it's, it just ties in. They've done Peg, they've done Pegasus, and they've done Quichabitin. It makes more sense to do that one as well. And, of course, it's an area they've not touched upon. But BBMF is a strong collecting area that lots of people go after. Um, uh, ME 110, um, for me, the most obvious thing, and I, I, I really believe this will happen this time, uh, Luft, Luftwaffe aircraft, so brilliant, is a desert mould scheme. Um, the picture I chose is, is a really iconic picture of two desert ME 110s flying over a harbour uh, in Tunisia. 
I believe that it's a basic desert scheme, but it's an easy one again that ties into ties into a little bit of history. I think a standard desert ME one ten is one of their best moulds, let's be honest. Um easy money for me. The Hobby Master one isn't up to the spec of the Corgi one. Again, you know, I just think it's an area that they've not touched upon. Um, Beauforts, so of course you've got the Beaufort coming out hopefully in January now. Um, I'm expecting a Coastal Command one. Again, it's an area they've not touched upon. You know, the Wellington, um, Halifax, um, Blenheim, great area of collecting. Uh, and of course, the Liberator as well, B-17. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah I think it's just, it just makes sense to tie it in, in, in with that. Um, you know, but also, there's, there's plenty of other areas they can cover, you know, uh, Malta. Uh, Southeast Asian Air, Air Command. There's loads of areas that can cover, but really exciting. It looks the business as well. I know James is upset with the box art. I won't get you started on that, but no, um, don't, it does. Don't. It does look the part. It really does look the part. Um, an area James already covered. The 148 jets. I think the Harrier might be the one they go after. But I'm also equal, equally thinking Tornado. So obviously Hobby Master are just uh, relative. They're relatively new mould Tornado. It, it is good. Let's be honest. The first two were awful with the the towel and the the oh, canopy, yeah, they were... but they fixed them now and they do look really really good. So I can't see Corgi going. In, you know, if it's a twenty year old mould, I don't think they'll be going toe to toe with them. So my feeling is, if they don't do the Harry, it'll be the Tornado and one forty eight scale. And if they can do the justice with it in terms of getting the swing wing properly working with the mechanism and it not being loose or jagged. I think it'll be an absolute winner, winner chicken dinner. Um, you know, the Phantom is brilliant. The retooled version with the new canopy is going to be even more brilliant. I think a tornado to come alongside it is, you know, the stalwart of the, the Royal Air Force for the last 40 odd years. Um, you know, obviously Desert Storm, the Gulf War, you know, it's been out to Bosnia, it's been out to Syria. Um, you know, it's been all over the show and it's, you know, an iconic aircraft and I think it probably deserves that treatment in 148. Um, so the next one for me was the new 109E, so the Emerald Mould. I think the one that's missing is a night fighter, a pure black night fighter. I've gone, yeah. I did a bit of research. Um, an aircraft Wild, from NJ, Wild South. An NJ6, NJG1 uh, with the code G9JV. I think Hasegawa made a kit of it. It's got red code markings on the side of it. Looks the business. It looks Look. sinister. And it looks lovely. And you know, put that alongside your... your Corgi, Luftwaffe, Night Fighters, and you're on to a, a winner there in my eyes. Uh, the bow fighter. So we've got the new bow fighter due out pretty sharpish. Uh, James actually hates it. Christian loves it. I love it. Um, what? Hey, the James. I know, it just it's... looks great. It's... Oh, oh here he goes. Here he goes. You started him off. Oh, oh, no. Trigger point. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to say do another Malaysian conflict one. For me, um, it's got to be Malta or it's got to be Battle of Britain. We've got the D-Day covered. Yeah. We've got a random post-war conflict covered. I think Malta or Battle of Britain. The one I chose was ZKF uh, rather than ZKA. That seems to be done to death. Um, a North Wheel-based Battle of Britain aircraft uh, introduced in the winter of 1940. Uh, again, for me, being a bit selfish, Essex-based aircraft, a little bit of history to it. Um, I'd be quite happy with, but then I'd also be really happy with a mortar based aircraft as well. Um, you know, again, you know, really important part in the role it played over there. Then on to the next bit, which sort of tie in together. So I've not gone for an RAF B-17. Uh, obviously 19, uh, would be 1942 anniversary. So it'd be 80 years next year. I've gone for an Operation Bolero B-17. So very early B-17E with the early roundels. Uh, and to tie into that, a P-38, the legendary Glacier Girl. So that was an aircraft that Colgi toyed with some years ago, but canned it. Um, and for me, them two, little story tied in together. Uh, you know, obviously with the Mighty Eight coming over to the UK, I think it's a really good tie-in. Again, it's an area not really covered. The E's not really, an early European war-based E hasn't really been covered as yet. So I think that'd be nice, but we shall see. Uh, 148. Uh, Phantom, I've gone with Black Mike or an area which I believe they should really tie into is the Raspberry Ripple one. Um, I can't believe Hobby Master haven't retooled theirs for a spay engine yet and put a Raspberry Ripple, Ripple one. Uh, 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 there's been a few Code 3s I've seen knocking around on the forums. 
And the Raspberry Ripple and Phantom tied together just looks absolutely sinister. Um, real easy uh, one for me to sell. And finally, the Bouchon. So we spoke about this uh, relatively early in the conversation, the Bouchon. And this is where I'd like to see a Bouchon made because, well, you've got the Ultimate Fighters, which is, again, you know, it's there and thereabouts. You've got the Battle of Britain movie, which is a great tie-in as well. Uh, you know, you could do all manner of schemes there. You could even do a triple set like they used to do in the olden days, a Battle of Britain hind call, Battle of Britain Spitfire, AIA or whatever it was, which was um, Robert Shaw's one, wasn't it? Um, and, uh, you know, it's just easy. Uh, I don't know whether they can do something with the old Emil mould, whether it's still knocking around, whether that could be retooled in some fashion. I don't quite know how that works. It's probably a pipe dream. Uh, but just tying them in together, again, if they could re-engineer it so you could do the two-seater one. So whenever people go up in the two-seater, it's tied in together. Of course, there's two two-seaters. There's one over here and there's one over at um, uh, Hangar 10 in Germany as well. Probably a bit of a um, pipe dream, if I to be honest. But again, people get to see it, touch it, smell it at air shows. Um, you know, what a great way to introduce it to you know, your kids, that little bit between toy and model, uh, and getting the new generation involved. That's it from my ideas. But I've added another little bit into here, um, which is a bit of an open forum, really, um, is around pricing shipping and delays so it's quite um as we know all being members of forums and uh and doing stuff like this a lot of people are quite vociferous around um the delays and stuff like that um i think for my my pen up's worth if i can get it out there i think pricing wise um obviously with brexit and the the <laughs> disease that shall not, the disease that james appears to have uh the disease that shall not be named um, as real put has really thrown a spanner in the works with it. Um, now, realistically, and you know, even me, who's got what I consider a good job and a good life, I think that pricing-wise, we are a couple of years away from pricing out the majority of collectors who are actually collecting die-cast aircraft. I think it's got that bad. So I don't know what that looks like going forward. But how do you guys feel about this? Because you know, I'm not going to go out and pay two hundred quid for a 172 Vulcan. I'm not going to, not going to. I'm not going to go out and pay 150 quid for a 148 Phantom. You know, I've got that for 60 quid for my birthday. Not going to do it. And I love, you know, look, looking around here now, I look at the investment that I've made. I look in Christian's, uh, behind Christian and look at the investment Christian's made. I know the investment that you've made, James, because you've got a, a stash which is outrageous in itself. You know, but you know, talking to someone who obviously, you know, you know, we have, we're not millionaires, all of us. You know, I guess we live decent lives, but we, we, you know, we've got we got kids and we've got families and we want holidays and stuff like that. I can't justify spending the money on collecting aircraft at the prices they're going to be in two years. How do you guys feel about that? You can go first, James. I'm still collecting my thoughts. <laughs> uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't bode well at all. Um, I mean, we had, if you remember, we had the conversation, was it yesterday, the day before? Um, you know, go back 10, 20 years, we could pick up a, a Lancaster B24, B17 for 40 quid. Yeah. You know, 40 quid, we could pick them up. They were dumping them. Models on dumps, you could pick up. But that's why they went out of business, in all fairness. <laughs> yeah, you know, you could pick them up for 20, yeah. 20 quid. Do that, um, so. But now, it, it feels like people are stopping the, you know, collectors are stopping. So Corgi are thinking, right, we're losing collectors. So we'll just increase the prices for the collectors that we have got so that we break even every single time. And you want to encourage more people into the hobby. We're not in the, you know, the, the 70s, 80s anymore. With technology, the way, with everything the way it is, things are going to change. The world's changing. You need to draw people in. You know, you could buy a well, kids now. Kids could buy an Xbox for the price of a bloody Corgi diecast plane. Yeah, you know it's it's shocking. It's it's too much, and it, if it gets any high, you know they're just going to give it up as a bad job because they're gonna they're gonna work at a loss. It's just too expensive. Does production come back to the UK? Do you think? 
Because you look at now in terms of shipping. So, and this is the other issue that I have. Sorry to jump in, James. So it looks like now Colgi are putting multiple releases in one shipment. So if you pay a pre-order, say for a B-17, a Lancaster, a Vulcan, a 148 Phantom, and so another heavy like a Wellington, you're looking close to a thousand pound that's got to come out in one. And then people won't pre-order because if you're sending big chunks together, I mean, you look at the releases that will come in before Christmas. Now, I was speaking to Andy Beck and, you know, they've, they've lumped in about five or six big releases together. People can't afford that. I certainly can't go, well, sod it, I'm not going to pay my mortgage this month, but I'll go and get five model planes instead. That's nonsense. Yeah. Absolute nonsense. Um, but then what ends up happening is then the suppliers end up sitting on loads of stock. So the suppliers go, well, sod this. I'm not going to order 10 of this. I'm going to order five of this. And then that creates another problem further down the line because then you start stockpiling stuff that don't sell. So you then get into a vicious circle. So by bringing it home, but and I'm just putting that out there because obviously cost of shipping has gone through the roof. Import taxes have gone through the roof because of Brexit. Mm. Does the production come home? Is it then cheaper and easier to source the materials back in the UK, build them in the UK, for near on the same price, but be able to release them at the time and produce them at the times they need to. I don't know what the answer is because I'm not obviously that no. way inclined. But no, it, at the moment it would cost more. Turned into a cluster, uh, dare I say it, a clusterfuck? Because people are going well. Stop that. I'm seeing no. Like look at Matt the other day, Christian. Oh, Matt oh. Called, what about seven? Well, probably about ten releases in one hit. I'm right? sure he's a lottery winner. But, well, he must be. Ten releases, Matt. On, on our little chat, uh, diecast chat. Um, but um, he, he bought about 10, didn't he, from Flying oh, Tigers right. in one hit. I yeah. can't do that. I can't do that. Yeah. I why would I do that? Why would I want to go to my missus? Do you know what? I'm just going to take a £1,000 out of the account this month and go and buy some model planes. She'll go, hold up. You've got a shed full of them. You ain't buying anymore. No, I, I, yeah, I th it's a vicious circle. And you know, unless you... Unless you have a massive extra income to come in. Yeah. It's not sustainable, is it? Yeah. So um, elliptical photography has put that the social media staff are dreadful. And he's, he's right. They are. You need to interact with your fan base. Yeah. They shot themselves in the foot. If you go back through Model Hanger or the Diecast Aviation Forum back from day one, you will see that they give models to look at. They ask for advice. They get all the yeah, feedback on how things should be done. Yeah. And then they mess it up. And then they wonder give, why they don't sell. I'll give credit where credit's due. Uh, obviously, Michael's great. Michael, uh, Michael Clegg, for those who don't know, he's, he's yeah, a really yeah, he is. great. Unfortunately, he's not the organ grinder. Dare I say he's the northern monkey. So throw that in there. Um, you no, know, he's a good guy, really, really good guy, really open to suggestions, but unfortunately, he doesn't call the shots. Um, but you're absolutely right, you know, to a degree. But we then see this with I'll, I'll use Noel as an example, Noel, very open to ideas, but didn't like critique. So, no, there's two different ways to do it. William at Hobby Master seems okay, but I, I get the impression he's quite standoffish as well. I see. Uh, we, it's easy to suggest this until they want to overhaul the way they work and engage the collectors. Um, it's, it's hard. And I get, I, I, and this isn't, I get the impression that in the whole tier of things, Hornby's up here and Corgi's a bit sort of like, hello, I'm here. Hello. Go away, Corgi. Uh, that's what it feels like. And then it's Airfix. Then it's Sky Electrics. Then it's Humble Paint. And then there's Corgi which is a little bit of, oh, hello, hello. It does feel that way. It really does feel that way. Because we should be, at this moment, incredibly excited about what's going to come in January. But you look on the forums, and it's lots of people going, oh, you just know it's going to happen again. Yeah. If now, you I'll go... Push back um... here and, and, and I guess, you know, that, the only way that can change that is to give people confidence again. And the only way to give people confidence is by um, liaising with the people who buy that stuff. You know, if, if, if you're selling a product and you can, you, you're just going to do what you're going to do and you're not going to listen, then there's only one way that's going to go eventually. So then there needs to be more. I, I get the impression there's more happening, 
but I think I need to go quicker and I need to be more open and more. And I, I'll give an example, right? So the example, so Hornby have a, like a podcast stroke show with their release on, on YouTube. Airfix have now a, a show which they release on YouTube. Where's Corgi? No, Miles, Where's the no. Corgi Collector Club? Mm. Now, that's, that's why I look at it. Now, I think there needs to be more. You look at the releases, so not, not so much this year because of COVID, and you've got to give them a little bit of you know, leeway because of China and the shipping and the Suez Canal. It was a perfect storm this year in terms of nightmare. But the year before, they got the, they got the selections right. They absolutely nailed. They didn't have any dumping. There was no Black Friday sale, and there was no Black Friday sale this year. They got it right. But what did they do with that? Did they, did they go with it? No, they just did the same thing the following year and they held back. And I dare, dare say that sometimes you go too aggressive and start doing 4,000 runs of stuff that's bang average. Um, you know, like a bang average mule of the road, Focke Wolf 190D, for, uh, A, for example. Or which a great is just a bit, Mark. Bit Mark. <laughs> you're, you're creating yourself problems. It's got to be gently, gently, you know. Um, yeah. But it feels like they're just safe. We're, we're, you know, we've had problems, we'll just be safe. Yeah, I tell you what, let's really go after it at Hornby, because you look at what Hornby are doing, uh, and, and a great example is the, the TV show, the, the Model World show, yeah? It's all about Hornby. Colgy sort of slip in there, didn't they, with the Bristol Fighter, but it, it's, it's all Hornby, Hornby, Hornby. I just think it's such an untapped uh, territory, but I guess they're also playing catch-up from when uh, Colgy went completely mental, and started doing weird, re weird and wonderful releases that didn't sell, which ended up costing them twice as much than what they made in return. So I do get it, but I also think there needs to be more love to, directed towards a brand because the car side of uh, Colgate is massive, huge. Yeah. And even the car collectors are moaning about what they can't get. So I, I, I don't know what the solution is. It just it, it feels like they just need more love. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But look, and that's me saying it coming from looking around the room that has <laughs> a thousand of their products littered around it. You know, and some amazing, superb, mind blowing stuff like the Phantom, like the 148 Lightning, like the Lancasters. But there's so much more that they can be they can do. Um, sorry. Anyway, I love Christian. Do you want to get your bit in before I otherwise I'll just end up talking all night? <laughs> Being manufactured. Like Corgi to me is still the most interesting one. The 148 range, you know, the World War One stuff, I think is fabulous. The shipping side of the house, I think I think you're right, but I think um, I think you're right. Having all of those models dumped at once is going to make pre-orders a little bit difficult for people to suddenly front up a thousand dollars. But hopefully, the retailers will step in, try and help their uh, the people are buying off them and either lay by or paying them off over a period of time. Um, yeah. I don't know, UK, but in Australia, that's big. Like we have um, on eBay, for example, we have uh, what's called payway, which so you can pay something off over uh, over a month. Sorry, over eight weeks. And you don't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, taken out um, four times over that eight weeks. So you, um, and then like my retailer who's in Perth, the one that I usually use here in Australia in Perth, I just order a whole heap of models and then just pay it off over a period of time. And then he sent it. Sometimes he sends it to me before I pay it off because he trusts me. So I guess my point friend. is retailers have got, a, have, got, have got a role in in my view. And I'm just speaking from the Australian experience. I, I don't know what the British experience is, whether you can do those things in Britain. But it just seems to me the retailers, if they keep product going out, uh, because to me, British is always the British trade has always been about, you know, product out and as much as they can, regardless. You know, that's why they dump. I don't know necessarily agree that's the way to go, but that's what they used to do in the past. Like, I don't think they do that now. Certainly, um, Reg the Veg has made it quite clear that that's no longer possible now. But you still got to get the product out, and the only way you can do that is by, in my view, the retailers playing a role. Um, <laughs> Um, Gary just recently on Hobby Master 3 announced all these models from Hobby Master, uh, sorry, the Hangar 3, all these models arriving from Hobby Master. 
there was 30 or 40 releases. Yeah. And surely he's going to have a problem. And people were saying on the forum, God, that's really ruined my pre-order because I don't know if I can get all these models that I've pre-ordered because they've just dumped all at once. And this, this is the problem. This is the problem. Yeah. Now, the, the hobby's got so expensive very mm. quick. And now suddenly yeah. all of them are arriving at once. Sorry, I've got to turn off the radiator, otherwise I'm literally, uh, I don't know, you see the sweat pouring off my head. Um, right. Ben, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing boiling. At least they work. Southern softy. Oh, flipping heck. Sorry about that. Um, the other thing is too, like I remember 10 years ago on, on DAF, people talking about delayed models from Corgi. I don't think it's anything. I think the shipping has exacerbated the issue, but I don't, yeah. I, it's not a, it's a new issue, you know what I mean? Like Corgi's had delayed product for, you know, it's gone. So it, it's just the way it goes. What The pricing thing is interesting, but what I find disappointing is that they are raising prices and in a way I accept that. But in my view, some of the quality is, is worse than what it was. Yeah. Uh, five or ten years ago. Now, I'm modelling is the big issue. I've always been critical of HM and their... Although they seem to be... The last one or two uh, releases have actually seen a improvement with Hobby Master. But it seems to me that um, that uh, Corgi's gone backwards with its modelling, with its scheme application, it's, uh, which is a bit Look of a Vulcan. shame. Cause... Yeah. Vulcan, a yeah. £200 release and they can't get the colour right on the belly. And this is why I'm talking about bringing it home. Do you think, how, I mean, let's be honest, that, you know, there's two types of model collectors in there. There's your real rivet counters where everything yeah. has got to be absolutely on point. And then there's, gonna, there's one, the casual collector, who probably mm. spends equally the same amount of money, but who isn't really too bothered if it's white or gray on the bottom. But if you're knocking out 200 pound model, right. you want it to be right, don't you? Oh, I would have oh, yeah. Pounds, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, back in the day when things were done, then all these mistakes were acceptable because you were getting a B24 or a B17 with the wrong colors for 40 pounds. Yeah, that's the, those days are long gone. So, if you want a heavy and it's got wrong colors, and you've got to sit there and go, Really, do, do I want to spend 200 pounds on something that's wrong, that, that is not an accurate representation of the aircraft that it's supposed to represent? Then, yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I think. The, the price thing, I, could, I you know, I'm not a, an economist. I've been following what inflation is in the UK and whether the actual model prices are in line with the UK. But the standard, in my view, um, has dropped a bit, which isn't so that the, the quality isn't commensurate with the, the quality that the, the price rise, I think, is, 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 you know. But I mean, but then again, they, you know, you look at the Beaufort, if, if it looks like the Pre pro, I mean, that looks magnificent. That looks like a looks absolutely brilliant. That looks like the bomb that that release. It looks the awesome. new Phantom, I've been assured, is absolutely stunning as well. And the, I can see I, that I, after picking that one up today, you know, it's not yeah. very often you, you get sometimes you get a model out of the box, go, yeah, it's really nice, put it on the shelf, and it disappears into the shelf. The Phantom, yeah. when I've got it out, I literally held it in my hands and went. What on earth? Why on earth do I not get this? <laughs> Why? Not? It's stunning. It's beautiful. And with right. the improvement well, on the canopy. Before that Phantom, can you remember the last model you bought that you got it out and you went, oh, Jesus, that is, oh, yeah, that is a nice bit of kit. Uh, Bristol Fire. And before that, probably the Lightning, I guess. The, the 148 one. They're the ones that have gone well. No, you get stuff out, you know, like... Um, Buzz buggy, I got out the P thirty eight, the mm. P fifty one. Went, yeah, it's great, but not on that level. Um, and I feel a little bit disgusted with myself because I hate mixing scales. So having one forty eight aircraft on my shelves really pisses me off uh, <laughs> in some ways. But it is just like you, you you pick it up and you look at it and you go, "Cool, that's a lump." But you look at the detail on it, and a, a beautiful thing about this Phantom as well, you can move it around and things don't fall off it. Yeah. Now, name me a Hobby Master Phantom that you you can breathe on that something doesn't fall off. Um, <laughs> really clever as well. On the 148 Phantom, the the undercarriage isn't just a push-in. You sort of clip it and then push in. 
So it actually holds it in place and can't come out. It's a really clever design. Yeah. Uh, and that, I love that. I was like, it's a bit like the magnets on um, the Calibre. The Calibre, Calibre Wings um, undercarriage has got magnets on, same with the um, SU-24. When I, when I put that in, and that was, pop, that was like one of the aircraft that, um, when I really put that in, I was like, wow, that is the business. Absolute business. Um, elliptical, sorry, elliptical. Which, what, which hurricane was that? Peter Townsend? That's GTA. GTA. That's, 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 that's Peter Townsend, isn't that's it? That's Been down the one. So I think he's saying that this is the one that he, he went wow on. Oh, really? I'm just... Yeah, I'm, which one is it? Is that the one no, DTA stands for tuck, isn't it? Um, ah, okay, oh, right. Oh, welcome. Oh, okay. no, That's cool. That's cool. oh. oh, Jason's just joined. Evening, no, Jason. No. But, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I keep hijacking it. I'll shut the hell up. Um, actually, while we're on this quickly, I've got some questions. Um, yep. that, um, as Jason just joined, one of the questions we've already answered, but I'll ask it again. Um, so Jason actually asked when are we when they're doing Johnny Johnson's Lancaster. Um, when was the last the Dan, last Dan Buster's release was the RF one hundred one, right? So there's a, probably a good chance Bar that was it Bar been... was Barlow? No, Barlow yeah. was the Collectors Club one. No. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, Club, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Barlow so the last like... one was the RF-100 one. With the, did that have the red bomb on it, the RF-100 one, or was that the Collector's Club one? Oh, I forget. Well, yeah, but the last one was definitely the RF-100 one. Uh, but Dan Bash no, the, the, R the RF-100 one was Dave. Wasn't it? it was Dave Shannon, RF-100 yeah. one. Yeah, Barlow, that's the last. Barlow had the red um, bouncing bomb. Yeah. But... Um, I, I, I have a suspicion that the Johnny Johnson one will be 2023 because that will tie into the 80th anniversary of the 617 squadron attack. Um, uh, maybe that uh, is it going to be a new mould? I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, sorry, the Townsend one was VYO. Yeah. So what scale is that? Is that the... 172. There's, there's two, isn't there? There's 132. Is there yeah. one, there's 132 and there's 172. I'll bet, I'll bet that's 172. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a nice little bit of kit, that one. Yeah. And yeah, sorry, so that was that was a question. So I've um, got a few other questions. I've got one from JDB272. He said, what do we hope to see? So we've got one answer each. So I'll go to Christian first. What do you want 100%? Now, let me wonder. Let me wonder what you're going to say. So you'll add one choice in the Corgi catalogue. What's it going to be? I won't say the camera because of... Um... <laughs> I already have it in a Code 3, which, to be frank, Corgi won't top. Look, I think I think uh, probably the, the 100 Group B7 is pretty close to the one I think that I'd like to see the most. Um, that's realistic. I was I, mean, I could crap on about a whole heap of stuff, but I, I'm trying to be realistic. Probably the, um, the 100 Group B17 is probably the most realistic, but definitely the one I want to see the most. Yeah, good call. James? Uh, do you remember the Spitfire and 109 double set for the Battle of Britain? They did? Yeah. Something like that. I'd, I'd like to see a no. Polish heritage flag. Oh, okay, yeah. Like yeah. that. That's what I'd like to see, but I'm not. So I'm going to go with uh, Johnny Johnson. Yeah, that's Johnny what Okay. I am going to go with a retooled Spit. That's, that's all I want. I just want the retooled Spitfire 5, 9, TR9, 16, 11, 8, whatever it may be. Uh, something that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a whole bay of 143 of them. Not that I've got any room to put any more in, but, um, you know, the Spitfire is what made me fall in love with aviation. Knock them out left, right and centre. That's, that's all I'm, I'm, I'm after. Um, Looking forward, yeah, NHS Spitfire. So if you joined a little bit earlier, Jace, you would have heard that, and the Silver Spit. Um, Forces of Valor are in the process of knocking out some quite interesting schemes on the Spitfire as well, which I'm tying up with Vincent Tang about. So that's quite exciting for my part. Um, but I, I want to I wanna see a Gemini quality style uh, in terms of... And, and I'm confident they can do that with the Mustang. So what they did with the Mustang is brilliant. So uh, on to the next one. Um, from Louis Pillet, 
I hope you said that right. He sounds, he sounds more French than me. Um, it would be nice to see some French planes. So um, I, don't, I personally can't see that. I mean, I'd love a Hawk 75, like the fire collection one. I think that's stunning. I think the only real chance of a French aircraft, I don't know what you guys think, is a uh, Halifax. I don't know if you've seen the one with like the cross hatching on the tower. Oh, Elvington. The Elvington, yeah. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> That was Johnny a beautiful did, release. Uh, one of the members of MH3, I think, started a French Halifax. So, so what does he want? Does he want um, he, he French? Just wanted, like French, to see French, French. So, plane. I don't know where he means. More as uh, Dwarfnies, blocks. There's nothing there for me that would be worth the risk of retooling because. I, you, I, sorry, go on. I was interrupting. No, I was just going to say, I, I, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a French Jaguar. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. Um, just modify those a bit, just one nose piece and good to go. Yeah. But again, would it would it appeal to the British collector? Um, uh, I, I don't know. The Corgi's got a fine... Uh, well, what about uh, the Corsair? The French uh, Corsair. They did a French Corsair, didn't they? Yeah, Suez Canal. And that's uh, all. A, um, a Vietnam War one? Uh, yeah. Indochina, sorry, Corsair? Mm. That'd be all right. So, I, 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 I think a Pierre too, Klosterman. A Pierre Klosterman I think, Tempest. I think they're too safe at the moment. I, don't, I couldn't see them branching out into yeah. something like that. I agree. Um, next question from uh, one of our followers, Wilder Jones, is always very, very... Um, you know, engaged in what we do. So last year he said no new spits. He said, would love a Dora. Now, I would be quite happy to buy mm -hmm. a Focke Wolf 190D. Uh, beautiful looking aircraft. But again, is it something that your casual collector would really get behind? I, I... Yeah. But the two, I think the two then would be very limited. Yeah. There's only so many options you could do. The late, the later we're going with Germany in the war, the less, you know, schemes you got to pick from. Adora would be nice, but a lot of people talk about the ME four ten as well, the Hornet, um, mm. and it's a lovely aircraft, a beautiful aircraft. Good it schemes. is a sort of aircraft you can knock out five schemes with and sell over a thousand a time with. Probably not. And that's that's when when, we, when you're yeah. talking business, you know, it's that business, that heart and brain thing, isn't there? Um, my I, up here would say no. I guess the um, the point. I mean, the interesting point is, is that we're running out of. What just? It's not that I don't disagree with you, but you've got to, you've got, you can't just stop tuning out um, Luftwaffe toolings. So, I mean, by the most obvious one is the four ten, or in my, I, I would prefer the the eighty eight G, the night fighter eighty eight G, but. The um, but the four ten, the eighty eight G, and the Dora are probably the three, uh, what, only viable, not only viable, but most likely to succeed out of all the potential new Luftwaffe toolings. I mean, can you think of anything else other than those three that's got a chance? No, because you can't go down the Condor route because that costs no, you about three hundred quid, and it always makes me laugh when we talk about poles. It always comes up near the top. Same with a Victor. Yeah. And I'd love a Victor, but so again, would I. It would ruin me. You know, how much would that cost in diecast form? You're talking north for 200 quid now. Um, oh, God. It wouldn't be bloody cheap. You know, Condor, you'd struggle with schemes for. Um, well, yeah. That helped the, that, that, uh, the one that's been rebuilt has sort of just sort of slipped through in obscurity almost uh, to be yeah. put out. And it's amazing. A brilliant bit of workmanship to get Condor put together again. But it's not something you'll see at an air show. It's not something you're going to see in museums around the world. It's almost a bit like this mystical unicorn of an aircraft. Um, but well, they've got one, up, they've got one in Germany. Yeah, the one, yeah. One, um, is it Hamburg or Frankfurt or something like that? Yeah. It's, in, uh, it's beautiful, amazing, brilliant workmanship, all done by um, a bunch of volunteers who managed to get this beast of an aircraft together. Um, yeah, they did well. And it's got it's got patches of it on the wings. It's got original wing, isn't it? It's not been it's not been restored. It's like patina. Um, it's such a clever restoration, but would it sell? 
in 172 scale would people well, have room for it I'm looking around now thinking where the hell would I put it like, just I've on got the pool, pool table one, and that, that'll do me I've got one plastic yeah. one yeah so so, yeah, I, I think that's my point. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm definitely not, because what you're saying is absolutely true. But apart from those three that I've just named, what... what, what... So you, your choices are those three, or you don't yeah. release the buffer for toolings. Yeah. I think you're going to struggle. Um, you know, it almost needs a, bad, a budget company like, a, like yeah. an Amacom or an Ixo to, to take it by the, the homes and try it and... And sort of prove a point, and and that's the problem now. You know, in, in this world we live in now, people don't want to take risks anymore. They've seen what happens. They you know, got their fingers burnt last time, didn't they? And uh, yeah, it's a bit of an awkward one. Uh, final question uh, was from Tom Galante, uh, and this one's for you. Do you think we will see a new Canberra? Do you really think we will or not? Well, based on what I've been told, yes. Based on what I've been told, yes, we will. And um, I, I was told there was a problem, but it, 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 but it was nothing to do with the tooling per se. It was something obscure regarding EU rules in weight or in packaging or something. <laughs> it, it, We're not in the EU anymore. Have you not heard? Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but, I mean, that was a while ago. Um, but And I haven't really... You know, I haven't spoken to anyone about it for quite a while, but I have not heard that the tooling is cactus from anyone who does who knows. So um, Michael's told you that it's fine. Mm. So I assume. Well, Michael the thing knows is, what obviously, you've got the Aussie one that's now flying. There's a Raspberry Ripper one in the states that is due to fly within the next couple of months, uh, wow, which is right. really exciting news. Uh, yeah. been brought by a private uh, consortium. Obviously, you've got the silver one that's over at Kemble, which was meant to go to the Indian historic flight as well. But that doesn't, yeah. it isn't beyond the realms of somebody buying that in the UK and getting it flying again. And of course, you've got the Vulcan to the Sky one, <laughs> which uh, I don't think it's ever going to fly, to be honest with you. Um, they can't even get a Vulcan the, in a hangar. Vulcan? Sorry, was right? that the one that was, was that, sorry, was that the one that was supposed to replace? The Vulcan, yeah, after they... the old blue one that come from, I think it comes oh, from right. uh, Air Atlantic, uh, and was roaded to Doncaster, and has just sat outside ever since. Right, so realistic that it's going to fly again. I no, there, no, right? but if you know, like I said, with, I think it needs. You know, if you look at the UK scene at the moment, you know, hopefully we'll have hunters back in the air, um, being able to display at some point. We've got gnats, we've got vampires, um, you know, uh, jet provosts. Um, you know, we've got the, the historic air helicopter scenes booming. You know, we've got potential for free flyable links next year. Um, no, well, have you seen the, uh, I've been the flight the links yesterday? Sorry? Did you see them do the test flight with the links yesterday? Yeah, yeah the one yesterday for historic yeah. air helicopter. Oh, flow. beautiful. The Stunning. North Wheeled one is due to flow in, fly up in the next week or so, I think. They've been doing loads of ground runs and weight balances. That's good to go. And they've got a third one that's just been brought into North Wheeled, which they're going to start work on as well. So there's loads. Uh, that's great. I think the more that the people get these in the air, the more possibilities there are. And I guess, you know, I, I keep banging on about the air show scene. The air show scene is what encourages younger kids to come in, enjoy aviation and get into this hobby. Um, you know, it's a great tie-in, and I think there should be more work alongside getting the things that are flying at these air shows into model form, so people look at them and, and build that natural tie-in. Um, and I think the with them being back, we, back on the scene, fingers crossed. That whether we like it or not, our air show scene is dying. Yeah, of Europe it is. is picking up. The European air show scene is is picking up tenfold. But for every air show they're getting, we're losing. Yeah. It's just the big ones we have now. The big one or the, the crappy little free one, like Blackpool. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of our stuff goes abroad. Um, there's an Australian that uh, wants to buy our bloody Mark V Spitfire. God knows how long it'll be before that ends up in Australia. Never, hopefully. No, nah, I think yeah. it's, probably the, it's, probably, it's probably the Aussie guy who has the Bouchons and the ME109 that's based at Big in. As well, uh, he bases a lot of his stuff over here. So, Christian, you will see 
a new Spitfire tomorrow, PL344, which is the ex-Tom Blair one, which is the same guy who owns RN201, which is a Duxford. So you'll see yeah. that tomorrow in its new scheme. And uh, I've just been informed while we've been on the, on the call that the other Spitfire we're talking about pays aviation as test flown this morning, apparently. Ah, they, I knew that it was that, that's at tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, where is Pays Aviation? It's not uh, tomorrow, is it? Not at tomorrow. Pays is at, I keep on thinking it's, um, yeah, no, I, I'd, I'd have to have a look. I've forgotten where it is. It's one of it's the more like rural. Wumba, but it's, <laughs> it's not. Wumba. <laughs> it, that, it, it's, yeah, it sounds like Chumbawamba, yeah. Um, I, 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 if you said it, it's, it, I think it's at the same location as um, where the P40s are, are restored. Uh, it used to be the guy. Yeah. I, I can't remember his name. He died, didn't um, he? Yeah, he died in a an unfortunate incident over water, <laughs> scooping some water up, testing a um, a uh, fire uh, a firefighting aircraft as scooping up water, but. Um, I remember watching. So it's his son that now runs the show. I've got their name, but it's Pay, and his and his mum. Um, Judy, Judy remember, Pay, isn't it? Judy Pay, yeah. I remember seeing the original um, Pay, the father, flying at Scarfields Air Show when I was a kid, and he used to have this wonderful Mustang. So, um, yeah, no, the family's just extraordinary, and and you're right. Here in Australia, the the warbird, it's just going off. There's just so it's many. Good. We've lost well, four spits in the yeah together well, TR9's saw... due to come down as well you've got the Fox Sorry? Wolf haven't you uh, down there you've got yeah, the Fox it's... Wolf 190A yeah, yeah it's, it's you know, P40's galore no, one of the only mer um, it's a shame the New Zealand scene and Australian scene can't tie up together because there's a beautiful P40E that's just flown in New Zealand which is off to Italy in a very similar right. scheme to the uh, Pearl Harbor uh, style P40 uh, beautiful <laughs> One of our P40s is the only Allison powered P4, or was the only Allison powered uh, P40 around. Well, the Merlin, you mean? The Merlin, P40, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, the Merlin. Um, yeah. That's so, the Pags one, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, and there's heaps, and there's boomerangs, there's two flying at the moment, and there's three being restored as we speak. And I'm one of those is. weeks to know that much, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so we're going to have five boomerangs in this country. It's going to be amazing. You've got Bouchon as well that's being restored um, in the uh, in Australia. Uh, so you look, <laughs> look forward to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all right. Well, it's, right. it's good. It's good. Yeah. Always broke. Um, it's, so I've been to two shows where it was supposed to fly, um, but it hasn't. But it hasn't been around yet. So it's it's. I, I, I believe they're. Like, it's, it's flyable, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. Understandably. I mean, like, how many of them are flying around the world today? Um, but the, the Avenger's flying all the time. I, I see the Avenger at every show. It's, it looks, it's, looks crack. There's a Grumman Tracker that I'm off to Haas tomorrow, um, and the Grumman Tracker may fly tomorrow, may fly. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, yeah, no, there's, it's, the Australian warbird scene is just going gangbusters at the moment. That's good. And so is the British, believe it or not. Hopefully we'll get a full air show season next year. Uh, I tell you, I, regarding Corgi and air show, when I went to Duxford and Riyadh, um, I didn't see Corgi. I, I saw retailers <laughs> selling Corgi, but I didn't see a Corgi presence, which I find, like, if I was Corgi, I would be there in a force with a big so sign. Corgi. Corgi, Corgi do Ria. They do have a plot at Ria. Yeah. They don't do Duxford. No. They do only... Home of aviation. Yeah. Corgi, I've, I've only been to Ria once. And when I was there, Corgi were there. And Corgi shoot himself in the foot because there's God knows how many people stood around this Corgi stall that don't collect. And they think about it. They go, oh, that looks all right. You know. I'll buy it, but Corgi, whoever sends these people to call to, to these air shows need locking up because yeah. they take pre pros. They don't take any decent models and set them up. They take shitty ones with bits of propellers that are hanging off them, and yeah. they just they look an absolute mess. They don't 
they don't stand out to you at all. Unless you're a collector, you know yeah. what you get. If you're a new collector, you just look at it and go, I'm not buying this stuff. It looks like something from Poundland. It's crap. You really yeah. need to pull a finger out on that one. And that's what I mean. Well, it's the right people, right jobs. Mm. Well, you need people like... I know it's going to sound silly. Obviously not the finance part, but you want people like us at the stalls with our enthusiasm telling about the history of this model and that aircraft they're seeing flying. You know what I mean? You like to, to, you know, the link that you're talking about, Mark, is 100% correct, but you need somebody to, you need somebody at those stores to actually talk about it, you know, and so social, social media, oh, product just, placement, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm a retailer. My job is to sell baked beans, you know, and to put it simply, people come into my shop, pick up the products, go through the till, exchange money for it. Simple as yeah. that. You know, it's all about putting it, you put, you know, if you put something like milk next to, or cereals next to the milk, guess what? The cereals go. People go, oh, shit, I need some Cheerios. I'll take them with the milk. It's all about mind games and getting people to spend money without even realising it. Yeah. And the harder you make it, people then forget about it. They go into the next store and, put, and, and look at something else. You know, you're competing with the guy who's, who's selling shirts. You're competing with the guy who's selling drinks. You're competing with the guy who's selling raincoats and umbrellas. It's, there's a finite amount of money people have. You need to track that money straight away. But when you track that money, again, it builds a memory. Every time you take that Spitfire and you walk into your room, that Spitfire's on your wall, you're going, oh, I had a brilliant day with my mum and dad at that air show at Fairford. Or exactly. a brilliant day at Daxford. It generates a memory. And then you go, do you know what? I might get my dad one for Christmas. Yeah, then your dad exactly. gets, you know, And suddenly you've got this snowball effect that people, then your yeah. mates come around and go, oh, what's that up there? Oh, it's a Spitfire. I'll oh, tell you what, Mark, you must have a lot of bloody memories. No, I tell you what, well, thirteen hundred of the things in here. <laughs> but um, yeah. But it is, you know, it's it's it. I make I make it sound so simple, and it's not. It really isn't. Um, and you know, you need to find the people with passion who, who 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 do it without thinking about it. Who don't do it with through gritted teeth. They do it because they love it. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's. People go and just take the check, didn't they, and go home. I'm not suggesting everyone at Corgi does that because they but clearly they don't. But the more passion you've got, the more the more you're gonna go out of your way to push and to, to generate and fight your battles as well. And that's really important in any job. You've got to fight your battles. If you don't fight your battles, then you just carry on doing the same things over and over and over again. And yeah, look, gentlemen. It's 20, uh, 20 to 12. I'm sure the cricket started because I can see that like, Christian like, went to go. We are, hopefully, we haven't lost any wickets yet uh, and it's going to be a nice 400-run partnership. Probably won't be. This is England we're talking about. Um, I get 100 and then I want them all out and Australia wins. So. I'll tell you what, though. This, you know, if we get through lunch without losing the wicket... Oh, it's we game on. Yeah, well, let's make it interesting. As long as we go down with, with a fight, that's all I'm worried about. But... Um, Look, cheers, guys. Really appreciate you joining me tonight, this morning, or whatever it may be. Um, James, if you can send me some of your pictures, not them pictures. Yeah. I don't want to see them again. Just yeah. some pictures well, of the aircraft you're talking about. Yeah, um, I was going to go ahead. And what uh, I'll do, I'll, for those who have watched, uh, obviously we've got a good hour and a half now. For people. It's, just like, it's like DWC, the movie, tonight. Mm -hmm. um, uh, technically, <laughs> aviation pulled at midnight. Um I'll put the pictures up on as as a post on the page and on the Facebook group so people can get a bit of an idea and generate a bit of discussion. Um, gents, if you'd care to join me in January to talk through the releases, that would be very kind of you. That would be a hoot. I was just about yeah. to ask that actually. I've got to do one for the uh, yeah. for the, big the whole the whole thing for the new catalogue uh, when it comes out will be uh, Christian. There's no fucking camera again. <laughs> just, just want to say actually, look, thank you very much. And that elliptical photography has been on the entire hour and a half. Yeah. Just listen to us three maniacs talking about model planes and renting a raven. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for saying yeah. you enjoyed it. Um, you. You know, and that's why we do it. We do this. You know, lots of people join tonight. We do this because. We give a shit about a hobby um, and we care greatly for it. And we want, ultimately, we want Corgi to be a massive success. The more successful they are, the more money we spend with them. The more money we spend with them, the more people come along and start buying stuff as well. And then suddenly, uh, we're back to mid-2000s where 
where they're knocking just, them out left, right, and centre. Uh, just a quick one before everybody disappears. Uh, elliptical. You say you're a new collector, is that right? You only just started collecting 172. Um, so he collects 172, and he's got uh, the right Pete Townsend Hurricane, I believe. If we could recommend one 172 Warbird Ooh. for oh. him from Corgi, yeah, all right. Yes, I've what got would one. Give him? Ooh, Gibbs pay for it. I'm gonna go and actually get mine. To be honest with you, I'm gonna go with the Corgi Collectors Club uh, Spitfire, the Great Escape Spitfire. GRZ, GRZ, yeah. I was, I was gonna go, I can't go Spitfire then, so I'm gonna have to go somewhere else. Oh shit! Um, no, all right, you go I'm, Spitfire. I'm going. Go Spit I'm going. Hold up. I'm back here. No, no. I'm getting it. Uh, you can, you can Spitfire. I'll, I'll give him the. I'll let him have the Willie Look Night. I reckon. Bobby Gibbs. Bobby Gibbs. Uh, P40. I'm getting mine. Uh, 40. And I'm going to go for something a little bit. So, I'm a massive fan of the Dragon P51. But I've not gone Dragon. I've gone for this. I've gone for Buzz Buggy. The one tanked P51. Regardless of what people say about it, this is the absolute bollocks of a release. It's absolutely stunning. Um, with the uh, changeable uh, flaps as well. Uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant aircraft. Oh, he's gone for the Bobby Gibbs one. Is that the Hobby Master yeah. one? Yeah, no. I can't. That's Corgi. That's Corgi? Oh, of course, it's, it looks really dark. One of the releases ever. No one knows about it, but this is Bobby Gibbs's. Bobby Gibbs was a, a, uh, a double ace. He was the squadron commander of the three squadron in North Africa, and then went to the Far East, was part of is the that, maritime... Is that the nose art collection one? Yes. yes it, it looks is. really dark. From here, it looks really, really dark in comparison, but I've got that down the bottom now. Uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a great model. Uh, I'll, I'll get, get the Willie McKnight 172 Hurricane. It's a great, it's a great release. Lovely release. But any of the new mild Hurricanes, you can't go wrong. Well, what a way to no. end it. Um... <laughs> Like I said, lads, you know, thank you very much for enjoying us. Thank you for everybody who's watched uh, and stuck with us, especially if you sat there for an hour and a half and watched us uh, go on. Look, ultimately, we're really looking forward to this catalogue release. We really are. And I'm sure it's not going to... It, they can't please every collector in the world. They really can't. But we'll, like I said, when we get to the, the release itself, we'll re-engage and I'll get you to score it and we'll score the models out of 10 in each, each, each release. Um... Look, all it's left for me to say is if we don't, if I don't speak to you two guys beforehand, have a brilliant Christmas, lads. Um, yeah, you too, buddy. Watching, have a lovely Christmas. Eat oh, lots, drink lots, what? be merry. Mustang has caught my oar. There you go, look, salesman. <laughs> <laughs> retail, isn't it? It's retail, that. My Jewish grandmother, that's what it is. That's what it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks to your retail, I'm going to go and have a bowl yeah. of Rice Krispies now before I go to bed. Oh, that, so, that's rock and roll, mate. Rock and roll. Look, I'll thank, give you that a look, Cheers, guys. Look, do you know what? We've been sitting here for over an hour and a half, and it's absolutely flown by, and it's been a real pleasure to chat with two people who completely share my passion as well. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's nice to do this from time to time. And for some weird reason, the longer as this has gone on, the signal's got better. So I don't quite know how that's worked. Um, but look, um, just like, I'd just like to end with Up the Barmy Army. Um, hopefully we haven't lost three wickets by the time I walk into the front room in a minute um, but have a great rest of the evening have a great rest of the day Christian thank you guys for watching uh, and I'll speak to you all soon much love All right. Thank see you later guys see you later bye bye